Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so part three here, and uh, we're doing uh, a double integral this time uh, where our uh, surface uh, is uh, z equals y times sine of xy, and our region r in the xy plane is uh, the rectangular box that goes from 1 to 2 along x and uh, from 0 to pi along y. When you're given your region in this fashion, it's safe to assume that the first interval is for x and then the second interval um, is for y's convention. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, now, uh, this graph of our surface z equals y times sine of xy is restricted along the x-axis from 1 to 2, just like our region r, but clearly it's not restricted along the y because it takes on both negative and positive y values, and the y-axis is the green axis right here, yeah? Okay, cool, but clearly um, in our region r, um, y is restricted to go only from 0 to pi. Now, to get started with the double integral and evaluating it, we know that we can write in place of dA either dx dy or dy dx. And so to start, let's begin with dy dx and realize that this is not such a good choice. Note that if we go with um, dy dx, then uh, inside this uh, first integral, we have to put um, 0 to pi. And then outside in this outer integral, we put from 1 to 2 because um, the outer integral is for uh, dx and then the inner integral for dy since we're choosing to interpret dA as um dy uh, dx to start and notice I said to start because we're going to realize that this is not a, a good path because um, this path is going to require that we do integration by parts since y times sine of xy dy is going to require integration by parts. We know that um, since we're integrating with respect to y this x here is a constant but y times sine of a constant times y uh, requires integration by parts and we don't like that that's a lot of work we know how to do integration by parts but we don't want to do that much work so uh, let's uh, switch dy dx to dx dy and also switch these limits of integration and then we can proceed uh, with a much simpler um, route yeah okay cool notice that here changing the limits of integration the order of integration um, just required that we change dy dx to dx dy and then change these limits of integration um, so reverse these guys right um, now it's not so simple in uh, the future you'll see that you don't always just simply change limits of integration like this why it was so simple here is because uh, both um, x and y here had limits um, lower and upper limits all involving numbers uh, you'll see in example four that we have to think a little harder when we want to change order of integration and um, other situations, okay? All right, uh, and more difficult situations. Yeah, okay, okay. Anyway, anyway, proceeding uh, from here, since we're integrating with respect to um, x first, the antiderivative of um, sine of xy is going to be negative cosine of xy divided by y, but then we have this y here. Um, so in total, we're going to get... Um, whoa, sorry, I'm skipping too much. Uh, I meant to go here first. So we're going to get um, negative because, again, the antiderivative of um, sine is negative cosine. So negative and then cosine of xy and then uh, the uh, 1 over y, right? Like, And then this y here is the same as that y there, right there, yeah? Okay, cool. And, of course, since we're done uh, with the integration here, we have to evaluate from 1 to 2. And so there that is. And again, this uh, negative sign is because the antiderivative of this negative symbol is the, this is because the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Yeah, okay, okay. And this one over y, you should um, be able to see why I had to write that. Okay, 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 cool, cool. Uh, moving forward then, uh, we write this because why would we write y times one over y? We should cancel that, right? And so we do that. And otherwise, uh, now we need to evaluate from one to two on what remains, which is cosine of xy. Uh, with the negative in front of the integral, right? Okay, and so we evaluate, and there we are. Now, we're going to distribute this uh, minus sign um, back inside of the integral, and if we do, then uh, we can uh, keep this minus sign and swap um, the order in which these guys are written, right? And this is what I mean, uh, basically, that we could do this. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. And now uh, we do the antiderivative of cosine of 1y, uh, which is... Um, 
sine of 1y and then minus the antiderivative of cosine of 2y, which is um, minus 1 half um, sine of 2y. And then we evaluate from 0 to pi and we're done. Yeah, okay, that'll look like this. Wait, wait, we need to make room, looks like. Um, so uh, let's do this and then um, do this. And there we are. Um, this is stuff I've already said, yeah? And now plugging in pi and plugging in 0 and taking the difference, uh, we see that this is what we'd have to write. And um, this is going to have a lot of zeros. So here it is. The final answer is 0. Now, I said look out for the final answer because this answer makes sense uh, only keeping in mind that we have positive volume above the xy plane and negative volume below it. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right. I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care.